Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew, and today I've got another XO6 Star Trek figure coming your way. And today we're taking a look at what I think is gonna be one of their rarest early figures. And for the most part, anything XO6 does is already fairly limited to begin with, but they've got some other figures out there that are even slimmer as far as how many that they produced. So today we're beaming in Captain James T. Kirk from Star Trek The Motion Picture. Yeah, that's right, they made a figure of Kirk from The Motion Picture. How wild is that? Hey everybody, Matthew here sitting in the editor's chair. And I wanted to let you know that throughout this entire video, I referred to Admiral Kirk as Captain Kirk. I don't know why I did that, but unfortunately the video has been filmed. It's too late to redo the whole thing. So this is me apologizing in advance for erroneously naming this figure Captain Kirk, because this is indeed Admiral James T. Kirk. I mean, it even says so right there on the packaging. Back to the review. And this Kirk had a much more limited run compared to a lot of his predecessors, and even now where we're at with X06 and their production numbers. Star Trek The Motion Picture is not exactly a universally beloved film in the franchise, but in my opinion, it's got some cool bits here and there. I could talk all about it another time here. But to be honest, one of the things that I do like the most about the film is actually Kirk and his outfit. And for the most part, the outfits in that film were, um, they were definitely a choice. Let's just be kind here. They're definitely a choice and maybe not the right choice. But as far as I'm concerned, I think Kirk looks awesome here, and I've been looking for a way to kind of show that off in my collection. And there's not much that can do that besides the one Playmates figure that was made, which is an excellent figure, but it's still just a Playmates toy at the end of the day. So this Kirk right here is going to definitely be a centerpiece in my collection, and I'm very excited to see this guy here. And I do want to point out, by the way, that I actually missed this Kirk when it was first sold, and I got very lucky on Black Friday 2023 when they did a special inventory sale, a low stock inventory sale, and I was one of the lucky few who got this Kirk here, so... Wow, can't believe I got him. Very excited to have him. Let's start talking about him. And I want to start with the packaging here because the packaging is actually a little bit different than most XO6 figures. So far, we've looked at DS9 figures, and that would be Quark and Captain Sisko. And they both had similar style of packaging. They had a slipcase cover on the front that you slid off, and then just a normal box underneath it. This Kirk here differs in that he actually has a magnetic clasp keeping the figure inside. And I'm going to actually do a little semi unboxing right now. So we just lift this tab up here, and we go ahead and open it. And now we got to look inside. And on the left side here, we have credits, which I very much appreciate. I'm very happy that X06 credits everybody who worked on this figure. Really cool to know all their names, and thank you to them for doing this. And there's also a QR code for an instructional about what to do with this figure, and this is pretty handy to ensure that you don't break your expensive Kirk figure while you're trying to move him or pose him or swap clothing or whatever you're going to do with him. And before I go much deeper, I do want to mention everything else before I go beyond this magnetic opening here. You do get a great image of Kirk in the front with that Star Trek The Motion Picture likeness, as well as a throwback to the poster with that really cool sort of rainbow warp effect happening in the background. There's also a lovely James T. Kirk logo in gold on top, and that stretches around the entire box and all the sides. And speaking of really cool gold things that are on the packaging, we also have the XO6 Starfleet Museum insignia in that same gold look. And that just looks so cool. I love that so much. I want to get a patch of that, and hopefully XO6 starts giving them out to the fans because uh, I want to start wearing this thing. Now the back of the box really has absolutely nothing of use or importance here. It just lets you know the number of the figure, who this figure is, and some information like choking hazards and warnings, all that fun stuff. But what is interesting to note here is there's a special thanks to Fansets, and Fansets is a producer of badges and pins for Star Trek and a lot of other franchises. And why are they being given a credit on the back of this packaging? Well, we're going to get to that in a little bit. Now back to the inside of the box, you're going to notice that next to those credits is another sort of thing here, and that's a big chunk of the Enterprise. And this is like, I believe, the part where Scotty docks Kirk and his little shuttlecraft into the actual Enterprise proper to step on board the ship for the first time. That's after we got that amazing look at the ship from the outside. And that's just a little cover, and once you gently pull it out, you're going to be greeted by a small block of foam to keep your figure protected. And underneath that is where you're going to find your Kirk action figure. And he's got a bag on his head right now. No, he's not being tortured by the Klingons. It's just to protect him from getting any schmutz rubbed on him or whatever. And you're also going to see a few of his accessories and what we talked about earlier with the fan sets deal, because there's actually a Starfleet badge hiding inside this package. But that's about all we can say right now for this box. So let's go ahead and beam our figure out of the packaging and take a closer look at this Captain Kirk from all angles. And here is our X06 Captain Kirk from the motion picture out of the box. This thing is so impressive looking. And, man, this is, you know, if it's your first time seeing an XO6 figure, prepare to be blown away. Because all hands on deck, I think we got a masterpiece in our hands right now. I'm going to go ahead and start right now and just do a quick rotation so you can see this Kirk from all angles. And it is definitely a sight to behold. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, there might be a few things that maybe I don't like, but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of still looking at it for my first time as well. I'm going to dig into this really deep in a few moments, but I just wanted to show you guys how this looks as it rotates around because there's a lot of cool stuff here. 
And you gotta agree, I mean, whatever you think of the movie is one thing, and whatever you think of the outfits for the most part uh, is another thing, but I really like the way Kirk looked in this film. Yeah, I've, I've always enjoyed the way it looks, and here in figure form, this is precisely what I've been waiting for. So let's go ahead and kick off this review proper, the same way I'll start off any review that I do for a figure, and that's by looking at the likeness and asking the question of whether or not this looks like the character or the actor it's meant to be. And this is meant to be William Shatner, 1979. What a time it is to be Shatner. <laughs> We're still a few years away from TJ Hooker, so this really is very much post-Star Trek Shatner and a few other things he's done since then, but there wasn't really a ton of stuff. But I also feel like this is a very iconic look for Shatner. Like, in my opinion, Star Trek the series, Star Trek the motion picture, and Star Trek II, as far as classic-looking Kirks and Shatners go in the Star Trek universe, those are the trio. Those are the triptych of Shatners to go for, and this one here is great. Like, this is just... This really feels like it's been pulled right out of the end of the 1970s, the very end of that decade. Shatner still has that really gross sort of artificial tan that was in at the time. His face looks different. He's, he's more aged, but he's not like how he's going to look in a few years from now. You know, a lot has changed about this guy, but the essence of Kirk still very much feels like it's in there. And it's still kind of a young Kirk at heart. Now, X-06 does some amazing sculpting with all of their figures. There's really no denying that. In my opinion, though, I will say that I think some look better than others. Uh, and that usually dictates a little bit of what I'm going to buy or what I'm interested in buying. And in my opinion, this Kirk is absolutely one of their best figures that they've done. And it's surprising, too, because this is one of their earlier figures. I mean, Seven of Nine, Captain Janeway, Sulu, those are all very good ones here. But Shatner is one I was very worried about because his likeness can be a little weird sometimes. But I think they really got it. And again, it is from that very weird era of Shatner where it's kind of in between uh, more key phases, if you will, of how he looked during his career, of his appearance. But I think they definitely got it down. I mean, the nose is there, the eyes are there, the mouth, cheeks, the brow. Like, they, they definitely got every single part of this Shatner down. Like, this is absolutely him. It looks great. Uh, beautiful sculpting job and hats off to the painting team as well like you know again let's keep in mind here this is a 1 6 scale figure it's a 12 inch action figure they're competing with folks like hot toys and 30 and people who you know you're going to spend a lot of money for good likenesses like if you're getting a marvel endgame figure or a justice league batman or whatever you're going to get like you know if you're getting it from hot toys it's going to cost a lot of money and that's because of that likeness with this X06 Shatner, you're spending a fraction to get just as much detail, and it's great. I also want to talk about this hair a little bit here, because that's where I do get a little bit more uh, curious about the design choices. There's almost like this sort of gold in his hair, which I don't quite know how I feel about that. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, it might just be the way the light looks, but there is this sort of like shimmering effect that his hair has. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool how, how it looks and how it's almost like a little bit incandescent the way it kind of is reflecting and playing with the light. There is definitely some sort of shiny element to it. I don't quite know what it is, um, but oh wow. I'm just, just looking at this Kirk right now from this angle and wow, that's totally him. Um, you know, but as far as like the hair shape goes, that looks great. I think the hair color is correct. And I do like that it has this sort of shinier effect to it. It's just kind of curious to me at first glance. Um, man, the more I just like turn the shiner, the more I look at him, the more I'm just like, wow, this is absolutely dead on like this is perfect uh in fact if i get a little bit of a dramatic angle here you can just kind of see i mean man this is just killer this is blowing my mind right now so the likeness is like a 10 out of 10 if it's not a 10 it's got to be a 9.5 or something it's pretty much spot on uh, but let's scroll down a little bit further and i want to spend some time talking about this outfit because that's really the main attraction to this you know for me uh, and, you know, granted, when they do get around to doing Wrath of Khan figures, X06, uh, just letting you know, yeah, I'll be doing that pre-order on day one. But this right here is a very underrated gem as far as looks go, in my opinion. Well, I don't know if a lot of folks will agree with me, but again, I think this is a really iconic, extremely underrated and ignored outfit. And the colors are all there. The patterns are there. You know, the nice thing about this, too, is it's pretty simple. Like, if you really look at it, it's a very simple sort of execution. But that's what I think really makes it so interesting and also very much a sign of the time to when it was designed. So uh, I think what I do want to start with is spend a little more time on his collar in particular. There's some nice detail in there as well. You can see it just right below his neck. This is, I'm going to assume it's all hand stitched detail, but just look at that really nice collar on him. Uh, likewise from behind, you can see that right there. So, all right, this is interesting because this is not, there's no like Velcro bits in the back that take this off. So I'm not quite sure how you'd remove this shirt. And frankly, I'm not going to even figure out and try, but yeah, I just wanted to point that guys out to you that this is, pretty much a seamless figure as far as fabric and ways to remove it goes. What's also really nice is that Star Trek The Motion Picture insignia badge that he has on his chest. Again, really beautiful detail, nicely sculpted and very, very wonderfully painted. 
and I believe that is also sewn into his outfit. So that's not removable. That is where it is, and that looks great. On his shoulders, I believe we also have, uh, you know, you guys can help me out, but I believe this is like meant to show that he's the captain. These are like little like shoulder rank thingies. You know, I, I don't serve in Starfleet. I don't know what they are, but you got the detail in there, and that is spot on as always. I really wouldn't expect anything less from X06. I mean, let's be real here. And there's that belt buckle. Uh, that's a, an iconic part of the outfit there, that bizarre belt buckle. Never understood its purpose or what it was doing, if it was holding anything up or not, but it's there. Uh, and that is, it's got a little bit of a stretchy piece of fabric to it as well. It does not come off, it is not removable, it does not open, it does nothing, but it's there. And it looks great. It's his little bizarre fanny pack of the future, but I love that it's included in there. And it's just another one of those elements that really ties this outfit together. Uh, likewise, too, we can talk about the stripes on his arm because that's another pretty important part of this figure here. This is the ranking of the captain. He's got all the right lines, all the right stripey bits. You guys can see it on the opposite side as well. Everything is there and just uh, really gorgeous looking choices there, you know. Now, here's where I think uh, things can get a little bit interesting, too, is the color of the outfit. And I know this can be like one of those points where a lot of real, real serious Star Trek fans can start getting contentious about, but you know, uh, this is the correct color as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to really be arguing. I trust X06. I believe that they are the experts in this. They do a great job researching their figures and do a lot of research as far as documentation and photos from on set and stuff go. You got to keep in mind, this is meant to be not necessarily screen accurate. Uh, this is meant to be actual real life accurate to the colors. There is a difference between those. There's a difference between set lights versus what you're going to see if it's in a museum or just walking around the street. If you want to debate about that, go ahead in the comments though. But for me, this serves the purpose I wanted and it looks great. And of course, I cannot ignore Kirk's boots or his shoes, whatever they are in this case, uh, whatever we want to call them, I don't know. But uh, he's got them on, they look good. Uh, but you know, in my opinion, it's not going to be really anything I, I pay super close attention to for the most part with him. Uh, it's just good to know that they're there and that's enough for me. I'm not, I'm really not looking for a super duper accuracy or at least I don't need it in this case because I'm going to mostly be looking at upper body anyway. Uh, and there are no holes in the feet, by the way. So as far as bases go, we'll explain how that works in a few moments, but otherwise pretty seamless. So let's talk posability right now. And these figures do have a great range of motion, but for the most part, what I've noticed with X06 figures is that while they do have articulation, the actual ability to pose them and such might be a little bit more limited. And that's because of the stiffness of the outfits in most cases. But this actually feels like it is a softer kind of fabric. So we might get a little bit more posability. Yeah, we're, we're definitely getting some more posability, I feel like, with the way that these arms are moving. You can see right now, he's doing a horror pose. Uh, we're definitely getting some good articulation right off the bat here. And that's that's really nice. So you guys saw earlier that the head is ball jointed and can move left and right and do all that fun stuff. We get some up and down action with it too. Very nice, very lifelike. Uh, let's see, there, okay. I'm trying to see if there's any like ch chest articulation. There might be, but that is definitely gonna be hindered. Uh, I believe the waist does move a little bit too, but that's super stiff. Uh, and I should add, by the way, that you remember that QR code we talked about in the beginning of the video? That would explain to you guys that generally speaking, when you get any X06 figure, uh, you should just hit it with a hairdryer right off the bat to loosen up a lot of the joints so you avoid breaking anything. I didn't do that here. I, I just pulled this guy right out of the box for the sake of this video. So yeah, he's gonna be probably a little bit stiffer than he should be, but that is the pro tip in general for any action figure. Just hit it with the hairdryer and you'll loosen him right up to a nice, comfortable point. Uh, so shoulders, back to the articulation, are ball jointed as well. We're getting some good motion there. Uh, like I said, the, the material is very, very nice and thin for where his elbows are, and he has double jointed elbows. That's how he's able to do this nice pose here. Uh, likewise, the wrists can bend, flex, and rotate, which is awesome. Uh, you could have him do a nice little Shatner dance pose, or you could probably even have him do a dab if you really wanted to. Well, you know, we're not gonna be that daring today. Uh, we'll just have him like this, looking all regal and Shatner-like. How's that? It looks, looks actually pretty decent. Uh, so the waist will not move right now, just because that's how it is, but you know, I'm sure there is some articulation there. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's actually a little, little bit of padding. I'm just kind of checking to see if there was any articulation. And interestingly enough, there's actually a little bit of padding here to give him a little bit of the Shatner punch. How about that? Uh, looks like the pants are actually sewn onto him too. So, all right, maybe giving this outfit off him is not going to happen. Curious to know. All right, let's talk about the legs. Those are not going to do much either. Again, that's probably more because of the fabric than anything else. But the legs are ball jointed and in theory should move a little bit. Uh, and we do have double jointed knees. Those move with no real issue. So that looks pretty nice here. Uh, I guess the big question is how he's gonna be able to sit in a chair or something like that if his legs are moving this little. And uh, that I cannot tell you. I don't really feel like experimenting with it beyond this point here. And he'll be standing up anyway, so I'm not really too worried about it, but just something that you should be aware of when you get this figure for yourself, if you can get this figure for yourself. 
Now let's talk accessories, and as I mentioned at the start of this video, this Kirk was a very, very super limited figure, and one that was not necessarily going to be, you know, having a major run because of how, I don't want to say obscure, but how not necessarily collectible this particular film actually is. So as far as accessories go, Kirk is very skimpy on that. And we have a pair of closed fists for our Kirk, and that's essentially it for him. Like, there are a few other bits we're going to talk about, but as far as actual specific accessories for Kirk, you got fists, and that's it. No phaser, no tricorder, none of the little things you might get with a Playmates figure, let's say, because, you know, as I mentioned, there was that Playmates figure of Kirk from many, many decades ago, but that was, you know, a $5 figure compared to a $200 high-end collectible. So, different worlds, can't really compare them, but... Yeah, you know, as far as accessories go, I think this entire line of the motion picture figures are going to be pretty scant on those. All right, so I got the closed fist into position. Uh, and again, this is going to be one of those moments where, like, you really want to hit them up with that hairdryer because it's going to also loosen up the holes that are in these hands. That's going to be how you get them onto those pegs there. So, you know, it gets in there. It looks good. That's a perfect fist. Um, it's just, you know, I do wish there was a phaser or something, you know, a little bit more. But, you know, I also get it. Doing stuff like that for a series that isn't going to have a lot of other figures joining it besides... Kirk, Spock, and McCoy, that's going to be pretty much it for this series, I believe. You know, it makes sense not go out of their way to do something that's only going to be used a very small handful of times, at least at this point. And I should also mention, by the way, that the detail on the hands, you guys can see the fist here, it's gorgeous. Same thing with the uh, other hands, with the open hands. You've got some good-looking vein detail, some pores in there, a uh, wonderful paint job. Just, again, all around, no negatives here whatsoever. If anything, it's just that I want more, and I'm not getting that. Now, in addition to those closed fists, we have what I mentioned earlier, and that's that's the contribution from fan sets to this figure here. So this is what we have. We have a pin that is that insignia from Star Trek The Motion Picture. And besides that, we also have this little pin back to attach it to. And uh, that's going to go, I believe, on the base. I think that's how that's going to be able to attach to it. So, yeah, these are little bonuses, really. Like, they're, they're very nice to include in there. So, at the very least, if we're not getting accessories specifically from the motion picture, we are getting these two little things, and uh, that's... It's an interesting trade-off. I don't hate it. Again, I'll, I'll always want to have more accessories for my figures, but I appreciate that XO6 kind of went this extra mile to give us a little bit something more, a little bit more added value to it, because they knew they couldn't as easily mass-produce those very tiny and expensive tooling accessories, and instead opted for these badges that you can actually wear, because... Yeah, you can see right there, that actually is pins and stuff, so that could attach to your uniform, it could attach to your bag, wherever you want to put it, or you can attach it to this pin back right here. And last but not least, like all Exo 6 figures, our Kirk figure here comes with a base. Everybody comes with the exact same base, which you're seeing right here in my hands. And the base also includes this piece here. This would be what you put the figure uh, on and how you keep them standing. And there actually is another extendable piece that's inside the packaging. But you've seen this entire video. For the most part, he's been having no issues standing up. So you're not going to really need it. It's cool to have that extra sense of security, but, I mean, he's standing pretty solid. He has fumbled once or twice, but to be fair, that's also the fault of where I'm currently filming. It's a little bit uneven. But overall, I mean, he's held himself up pretty nicely, and that's without a base. And in case you're curious, you guys see the base here. There actually is an additional piece if you want. You could swap out that plate on the base for, as I knock over Kirk, uh, you could swap out the plate for this piece here, and if you have enough bases, you could attach them together, because they do, I believe... Uh, at the very least, if they don't attach, I think they can just stand next... Yeah, I mean, they can definitely stand next to each other with no problems. They are, they're not interlocking, I guess, but they are able to get side-by-side side real easily. And you can just swap it out for this section here and make a big round transporter base. So that's pretty cool. And as we wrap this video up, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of another Exo 6 figure. Here we've got Captain Sisko. This was the very first Exo 6 figure that I reviewed. Let's just do a nice little pan up and down right now, just so you can see all that detail side-by-side. -side. Both are gorgeous, beautiful, amazing figures, and in my opinion, worth every penny. And it's cool that we're getting like this kind of a collectible now. And uh, to be honest, you know, Q QMX, Quantum Mechanics, they did a great job with their 6-inch figures, uh, with their 12-inch figures, I should say, but XO6 is really just going above and beyond. I mean, it's hard to see these and just not think this is Star Trek perfection. I mean, there are still a few little kinks, I think, that they're working out as they go along. But for the most part, they've been delivering excellent figures every time that while, yes, are expensive from the outset, I think they're worth it. That price point just means you can't necessarily be a completionist, and that's not a bad thing either. So that's my look at the X06 Star Trek The Motion Picture Captain Kirk figure. Normally, this is the part of the video where I tell you guys where to buy one and to use my affiliate links and all that, but unfortunately, this Kirk is now officially sold out for good. That's it. The end. No moss. This Kirk was limited to begin with. The only reason I was able to get this was because of X06's Black Friday low stock sale, I got super lucky. I think there was like maybe five of these guys left. And I got to tell you, like I was refreshing that page. I jumped in this thing like a predator. 
I got him, and no looking back, I'm so happy. Honestly, I'm mostly sad that I didn't get him the first time around, and I should have. I should have trusted my instincts, and that's kind of my warning to you guys right now as this figure rotates around is, honestly, if there's an Exo 6 figure that you want, don't wait. Just get it, because really, once they're gone, they legitimately are gone. They're not coming back. They're not retooling. They're not making these again. There's no replicators here, so as soon as production is done, you better pounce. And not all these figures will be as limited necessarily as the motion picture ones are going to be. But still, if this is something that you like, if it's something that you're really attached to, I recommend you do it and don't look back. You guys can see it here. This Kirk is amazing. It's beautiful. I think the likeness is great. The hair is wonderful as well. Outfit is exactly what I was hoping for. And while I do wish that there were some more accessories here, I also understand why there aren't. So I can kind of, you know, at the very least, accept that. I'm disappointed to a degree about it, but I'm not going to dock points for it because I know this is a small company still. They're still kind of starting out, especially when this Kirk came out. They're still kind of building and they're doing a lot of stuff very, very quickly, very rapidly producing figures here. So I can't get too mad. If anything, my hope would be that perhaps one day they could just afford to make like an accessory pack or something. And that would be a cool way to get some more obscure things like the phasers and the tricorders in the first film, the communicator wrist thingy as well from this film, and other accessories that they weren't able to necessarily put with other packages just because of time, money, whatever. But for what I'm getting, I'm super happy here. And really, that's been the story of XO6's Star Trek figures to this point. Nothing but good things to say, and I'm very excited for the continuing future of this company and this brand. I'm going to have links to where you can pick up some other X06 Star Trek figures. Not this one, unfortunately, because like I said, it's gone, but you can still pre-order a few others from certain websites. And there's a few others that are still having some existing stock. So yeah, it's not too late for a bunch of other figures that have ended their official pre-order window. These are bar none the best Star Trek action figures ever made, and you're paying for that as well. So it's worth it for the perfection, but as their founder, Schubert Tam, always says to prioritize what you want and don't look back on them. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. And until then, live long and buy toys.